start year 10, I hope everyone's okay. Um, last lesson, we finished with this table, is Britain still a Christian country? And you were looking at some evidence. Today, this lesson is not going to be any new content. It's just going to be kind of going over uh, some of the information you could have put in that table and then looking at how you might answer a 15 mark question about this. My advice would be is to try and answer this 15 mark question. You can use the... Um, you could print out the structure sheet that I've, that's on this uh, on these slides. I'll put I can put the slides on the um, on the Microsoft Teams page, or um, uh, or you could just write it out uh, online paper. It's up to you. Um, but yeah, what we're going to do so there's going to be three parts basically to this uh, um, lesson. First, I'm just going to go through what you might have put in the yes and no sides of that table. Uh, is Britain still a Christian country? What reasons to for yes and what reasons to no? And I think, as you remember last time, I'd also talked about, can you give some responses, some evaluation points, why you would disagree with the arguments on your side? Uh, then we're going to look at the structure of the question, the, the question I'm going to give you and the structure of that question. And then I'm going to go through an SEE plus E, which you could use in your answer. That's absolutely fine. Just to give you an example of how these how it would work so let's go through this so let's have a look at some of the reasons why we could say yes britain is still a christian here's my three reasons i'm going to talk through them and i'm going to give some reasons to disagree with them so my first one is th there are different ways you could have done this so if you've done this work from the previous lesson and you haven't done the same as me exactly that doesn't matter uh, but if you were stuck then this might help you so First one to say, our major holidays are Christian. So the major two biggest celebrations in this country are Easter and Christmas, and they are both um, very strongly religious holidays. I mean, that they, they uh, for Christians, those are the two most important celebrations of the year because one celebrates the uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus, which um, is important because Christians say Jesus died just to forgive our sins, and they say that because he resurrect from the dead that means he's got power over life and death which means he can guarantee people eternal life in heaven christmas celebrates the incarnation of god when god became jesus was born and so god became a human being so for christians that's really important because it meant that well it meant that god is imminent involved in our world it means that god knows what it's like to be a human being he's a he's a kind of someone we can relate to because he came down to earth and suffered like we suffer so that's one reason to say we're still a Christian country because our major Christian holidays are Christian. But, um, you know, it's easy to criticise because most people would say that those holidays are not as... Um, are not observed in a religious way by most people today. So Chris, Christmas, though you might get something about, you know, feeling that you should be nice to people at Christmas, that's about as far as the religious message goes for many people. It's usually about seeing family, and presents. Easter too. Um, we have days off at Easter, but do people really think about the, the religious message? Mainly it's about chocolate eggs, I would have said. Um, so yeah, you could say, and this is a word you could use, you could say those holidays have become secularised. We used that word last time about the hot country as a whole. But you could say um, the holidays have become secularised. In other words, they're still celebrated, but they're not celebrated for religious reasons. Okay, second one, the Queen is the head of the Church of England and the head of state. So we've been through this quite a lot in the first lesson. So, so obviously that would be a reason to say we're religious because the same person runs the religion of the country who runs the country. However, it's really easy to criticise because in both senses, it's questionable how much power the Queen has. She is the ceremonial head of um, this country, but she doesn't actually have power over that much power over decisions that are made in the country. They're made by the Prime Minister, by the government. Um, in the same way, she's the ceremonial head of the Church of England, but she doesn't have complete power over what the Church of England does. That lies in the hands of the bishops and the Archbishop of Canterbury and stuff like that. So you could say, yes, in some ways it shows we're a Christian country, but uh, it's all a, it's all it's not real, her power. It's just uh, kind of ceremonial or symbolic. Lastly, our values are still Christian. David Cameron, when he was Prime Minister, uh, described the values that he thought were values that Christian values, but values of this country too. So his idea was that Christian, we're still Christian in the sense that we still have Christian values. And these are the values he said. Responsibility, hard work, charity, compassion, pride in working for the common good and honouring the social obligations we have to one another, to our families and our communities. 
Again, really easy to criticise. He says they're Christian values, so we're still a Christian country. But I think a lot of people would argue with that and say, actually, you don't need to be Christian to have those values. You could have any religion or you could have no religion and still believe in those things. Okay, let's go and look at why Christian. Why we could say Christianity is not uh, this country's. Okay, number of people who go to church is falling. You could have statistics on this. This is on your sheet. In 2012, last figures I had, every week, 880,000 people uh, went to church every week. Now, that's, that might seem like a lot of people, but for the whole country, it's actually a tiny proportion of the population. Less than a million people in the country go to church every week. Um, how could you criticise that? Well, you could say, well... Just because people aren't going to church doesn't mean they're not Christian. Isn't Christianity about your beliefs rather than what you do? Uh, in 2011, the last sentence, 59% of people still identified themselves as Christian. So that's still more than half of the country. So, yeah, maybe church attendance isn't uh, really measuring the number of Christians in the country. Second one, less people are getting married in church than before. So people tend not to get married in church anymore. I think uh, uh, in 2012... 30% of marriages were in church in this country. So that's a, that's a small percentage. More marriages are taking place outside of church than in church. Again, there's different ways you could criticise that. You could say, well, look at the you know 2011 census said 59% of people are Christian. So it doesn't seem to, it seems wrong to say, so that doesn't seem to show that everyone who doesn't get married in church is not a Christian. Perhaps there are other reasons why people aren't marrying in church. Maybe there's an increasing number of people who aren't Christian in the country. So maybe people who are Christian are now more likely to be marrying outside of their religion and therefore they're still they might still be christian but just don't get married in the church because you know it's not appropriate because their partner is not a christian that might be one reason you might want to say well yes you could bring it back to some of the arguments another thing you could say well look um that's one measure of things but actually another a more important way to measure things is that not what individual people are doing are they getting married in church but like the role that it plays in our public life so you could say well look the ch queen's the head of the church of england church of england minute, pr bishops still sit in the house of lords those things might make you think even if individuals are less christian we're still a christian country because of the links we have our government has with um with christianity and that's an interesting idea because when you're answering this question it how you how you what side do you come down on will depend on what you're really looking at you know do when, what do you mean by a Christian country? Does it To be a Christian country, does that mean most people need to believe in Christianity? Or does it mean that, is it more about, it doesn't really matter what people believe, it's more about how, how much influence does Christianity have over society, over um, uh, the government and all those kind of things? Now you can pick whichever view you want. If you think that it's more important that people actually believe in it, then that that would be your what what you would say you know you then you'd base it on those statistics whereas if you think it's more important the role that it plays in the government and so on and so on then you you'd pick that one so it doesn't you don't have to you don't have to uh there's not one that's right and one that's wrong it all depends on what you think last one i've put atheism is more visible in the past so my big example of this would be my evidence here would be the god delusion by richard dawkins so richard dawkins is a famous atheist we've come across him a few times he, uh, his book, The God Delusion, has sold three million copies in this country, which is a big number of uh, copies to sell. So that suggests that, you know, we're becoming less religious because more people are atheists, more people are interested in atheism. Well, again, there's m multiple ways you can criticise that. You could say, but look, the statistics still 59% say they're Christian. Just because a lot of atheists are around doesn't mean that we're still not Christian overall. And that, Or you could say, well, yeah, it doesn't matter whether how many copies this book sold it's still the case that the head of the church of england is the queen and the queen's the head of the country so we're still kind of in a formal way a christian country so there are lots of different ways you can look at this argument hope that makes sense okay let's do the next bit okay here's the question that we're going to try and answer in this lesson uh, it is no longer possible to call britain a christian country to discuss this statement so and here's the structure you do your introduction you do your three uh, SE plus E's, and then you say what you think in your conclusion, hopefully giving two reasons. So, um, I'll just go through a little bit of this. What would you put in the, the beginning? Well, um, you know, you've got to reword the, the sentence. And I'd use the word secularisation here. I'd say this statement raises the question of whether secularisation has happened in Britain or whether Britain is still a strongly Christian country. Something like that. 
you know if you would use the word secularization that guarantees that they un know that you understand the statement because you're using new terminology specialist terminology to describe that statement or to describe what the issue is and then when you put i think the thing here to bear in mind is that on this particular question um you're not going to be able to say liberal christians would say or um uh conservative protestants would say and so on you're just going to give different reasons for and against because the truth is you could be a christian and think this is not a christian country anymore there's plenty of christians who would say that they they wish it was a christian country but they don't think it is anymore same thing you could be an atheist you could not believe in religion and think that, that this is still a christian country even though you wish it wasn't so it's not really a kind of debate between different um viewpoints like that it's really just between two viewpoints people who think it is a christian country still and people who think it's not so y y when you put i think you can't really put th say i agree with the um um uh, the liberal christian view or catholic view or whatever you can't do anything like that you just got to put what you think you just got to say i think that it's still correct to call britain a christian country or i think it's no longer correct to call britain a christian country you don't need any reasons because they go in the conclusion so then you just go through pieces of evidence. Now we went through six pieces of th six reasons, three, four, three against on that table, but you only actually need three. You you need to make sure that you've got at least one reason. One of your statement evidence explanations is to agree, another one to disagree, and the third one can be either agree or disagree. It's fine, it doesn't matter which one. So just whichever ones you're most comfortable writing about. I'm going to go through an SEE plus E uh, to begin with. I've chosen to do the one about public holidays because I think it's nice and easy. There's quite a lot of you can write about here. You can see my explanation, the green bit is really long here. Uh, so yeah, I've written here that statement in blue, evidence in red, explanation in green, evaluation in purple. So I'm just going to go through it. It could be argued that Britain is still a Christian country. It should be Christian country. Sorry about that, that's a typo. Because its major holidays are Christian celebrations. That's my statement. So there's the reason. Evidence. I'm just going to say what those holidays are. The most important public and hol holidays in the UK celebrate Easter week and Christmas. I've put Easter week there rather than just Easter because I want to talk about the different things in Easter week. Because Easter itself just celebrates the resurrection, whereas the week of Easter celebrates the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. So here's my, here's my explanation. Why does that make Britain a Christian country? Easter week celebrates the death of Jesus, which is important for Christians because they believe that Jesus died to forgive our sins, and his resurrection, which shows that Jesus had power over death and so can guarantee eternal life for his followers. Christmas celebrates the incarnation when God became uh, well, became to earth. God came to earth as a human being. Sorry about the typos, guys. I've been working quite quickly. The fact that our, not out, oh, it's terrible, this. Typos are terrible. The fact that our most important holidays are linked to key teachings in Christianity seem to suggest that Britain is still a Christian country. So that's my explanation. So I've said, you know, statement, it's a Christian country because the holidays are Christian. I've just said what the holidays are. And then I've done two things in the explanation. I've explained why though how those holidays are Christian, what it is about those holidays that, that links to Christianity. And then I've said, well because they're linked to Christianity and they're our biggest holidays, that seems to suggest we're a Christian country. Now I've got to criticise it. So I've said, however, atheists may, may, may argue that Christmas and Easter no longer have a religious meaning for most people in Britain today and have become about spending time with family and receiving presents rather than about Christian beliefs. So there's a good reason to disagree with the idea that those holidays make us a Christian country. And all you need to do is take your evidence, your reasons, and write two more SEE plus E's and a conclusion. Try and give two reasons for what you think in the conclusion. Um, you know, in, when it comes to this work and what we're going to do with it, I'd like you to try and write this essay if, if you can. I know that time is difficult. I know this is a stressful time. Uh, but, you know, if you can, it's good to, to, to write it. If you want to send it me, if you've written it, that's fantastic too. I know some people in the past, you know, from, from previous weeks have sent me work, um, which is great. And, and I really appreciate any extra work that you've sent me. The fact that I haven't always got around to marking it doesn't mean it's a waste because I will get a chance to. It's just that at this, this moment in time, things are quite uh, pressured in terms of time. So I'm not being able to at the moment. But yeah, if you want to send, want, want to write that out and send it to me, then please do so. If not, just write it out. Make sure you have an answer to it written. Okay, 